We're now going to move to Harvey Locke. My friend Harvey Locke has been collecting data uh, or and perspectives from the scientific community on, on what their views are for how much would be required. And, and there's been some, actually some new stuff shown here this week as well. Harvey is, uh, uh, Harvey is a conservationist with a long interest in large-scale thinking about nature conservation, large-scale connectivity. He, uh, he's affiliated with the Wild Foundation and uh, the Yellowstone Yukon Initiative. You may have heard him in the parks uh, plenary. Harvey, uh, please come to the stage and, and tell us about um, your summary of, summary of the scientific world. Shout out to Stephen Woodley, who's in that category of people who work full time from retirement for the World Commission on Protected Areas, and is one of our heroes. So thank you, Stephen. So um, we're going to master this. No, nope, I'm going to do this. So big point. The best thing we know how to do in the world to save nature is make parks. Yeah. Really simple, really, really important. This is Amboseli in Kenya. Look at that picture. Look what's going on there. It's crawling with life. It's because it's a protected area. These are good things. What is a protected area? This is a definition that came out of a global process that went on for several years post-Durban when we were gathered 10 years ago. It's really important to know that this was an elaborate process and I think we should look at it very carefully and honor it and understand it clearly. A protected area is a clearly defined place managed to achieve the long-term conservation of nature. That's what they're for. This is important to remember. So how much of our planet have we dedicated to the long-term conservation of nature? There's the answer. 12.7% of the land and 1.6% of the ocean. Can anybody in this room tell me why that's the amount? Is there a study that justifies that amount? <laughs> Can you tell me of a study that justifies that amount? No hands up. Because there is nothing. This is completely arbitrary. This is the Convention on Biological Diversity's purpose. This was signed 20 years ago at the same time as the Global Framework Convention on Climate Change at the Earth Summit in Rio. 180 countries of the world have signed it. The only big one that you might have heard of is the United States that hasn't, but they have similar goals in their domestic legislation. So what is the big idea here? The big idea is the conservation of biological diversity. In other words, nature. So if that's the goal, what's the plan? Well, the plan is, under the convention, there's an Article 8, and it says, that we will establish a system of protected areas for biological diversity, and we will promote the protection of ecosystems, natural habitats, and the maintenance of viable populations of species and natural surroundings. This is straight out of the text of the convention. So that's the goal of the convention. What are the conditions in which we find ourselves? This is from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in 2007. We find ourselves in a situation where the resilience of ecosystems is likely to be exceeded this century because we're buggering up the earth. That's the short summary. If you look at this, this is a big problem. If we overwhelm the resilience of ecosystems in the world, we have a big problem because that's where our food, air, and water comes from. So this is quite pressing. What are the targets that have been set to preserve biological diversity under the convention that virtually everybody in the world has signed, they are to conserve 17% of the land and 10% of the oceans. 
Can anybody tell me of a study that says that's the proper goal? Is there a study you have ever seen that says that's the proper goal? No. No! There simply isn't. This is an arbitrary goal. So what does it take to conserve biological diversity and meet the convention's objectives? We have this discipline called conservation biology where people have spent the last 40 or so years figuring out what it takes to preserve biological diversity. And this is a roll-up summary of widely held consensus principles. One, all native ecosystem types must be represented in a system of protected areas. Two, populations of all native species must be maintained. Three, ecological processes such as fire, flooding, and so on must be maintained. And four, it needs to be resilient to long-term environmental change such as climate change. Very simple. Those are all summarized in an article that I wrote in Parks. You can see the reference for there. So what does it take to meet the goals of the Convention on Biological Diversity if it's to do those things that those four principles apply to? Which it surely must be or we won't conserve biological diversity. Let us go to the Western Ghats in India. One of the great biodiversity hotspots in the world. There's a concentration of fantastic parks there in the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. The green area is the Ghats, that means mountains. The dark green area is parks. Uh, there's tigers, everything there. Fantastic place. Awesome, awesome place. When a study was done, how much of the Western Ghats do we need to protect to maintain all of that wonderful biodiversity by a bunch of Indian experts in 2011? About 60%. How about the Serengeti, where the big natural process is defined by migration of wildebeest and zebra, or zebras. This is the Greater Serengeti Mara ecosystem. 65% of it is protected, which of course is why it's one of the world's great conservation areas. And that's not enough according to this study, that we needed to have additional protective mechanisms to maintain the migration of the wildebeests. How about South Africa, Cape Floristic region, all about the plants and the mammals? Amazing place. Study, it needs 52%. Are you seeing a pattern? Yes, I saw some nods. This is from the Canadian Rockies, the place I hang out. Expert panel, a zillion people brought together. How much do we need to do between Glacier Park in Missoula, Montana, and Jasper National Park? Answer. 49.7%, but of course we haven't addressed connectivity or climate change. Another half. So, the pattern is, this is from a paper that a number of us co-wrote, Gary Tabor's shop pulled together the graphic. When we ask policymakers for targets, do they refer to the science? No. When we ask studies, scientists, they all come in around half, at least half, that's the range. Policymakers are setting the targets down around 10 and 17 percent. Why? Does it meet the goals of the Convention of Biological Diversity? No! So why are we putting up with this? Why aren't we screaming from the rafters? What about Aboriginal people? This is my friend Herb Norwegian and my friend Alison Woodley, who's here. He stood up at the World Wilderness Congress in Anchorage, Alaska as chairman of the Native Lands and Wilderness Council and said, I believe First Nations people all over the world should advocate for the protection of at least half of their traditional territory. And they actually got there to that number by rolling up uh, traditional ecological knowledge from their people on their landscape. Where did you get your first moose? Where's the richest place to trap muskrat? And they came up at half on their own. I, there's less of a pull together on marine stuff, but I like this quote from Sylvia Earle, which is, Nature Needs Half applies to the oceans too. So why Nature Needs Half? It's all rolled up in this article in parks. You can read it. You can go to the natureneedshalf.org website. This is the summary of the science that justifies the current IEG targets. The blue screen of death. <laughs> so here's the answer. Protecting and interconnecting at least half the planet's land and water is necessary to sustain the health, function, and diversity of life. And I want to ask you, there's going to be a promise of Sydney. Is the promise going to be, let's have another goofball target? 
Or is it going to be, let's have a target that works? That's up to us. I say we speak up, and strangely enough, the people of the world agree. So let's speak up for nature. Thank you.